नमस्ते नाद तनुमनिषम शंकर नमा मे मनसा शिसा मोदक निगमोत्तम सामवेद सारम वारम वारम सद्यो जातादि पंच वक्त्रज सरिगम पध निर पधनि वर सप्त स्वर विद्यालोल विदलित कालम विमल हृदय त्यागराजपाल In this one song by Sri Tyagaraja, we see the quintessence of our Karnataka Shastriya Sangeetam, with its origin in Samaveda, and the very Shiva Murti as the embodiment of the Swaras. And fast forward to the current times, where we see some narrative being built, which are completely antagonistic to all the sentiments espoused above there are attempts to deconstruct the entire edifice of karnataka shastriya sangeetam through cl- a clever series of winding arguments things like god having no business in karnataka music and that brahmin musicians in the past as well as in the present being the main culprits for whatever while that exists in this community today now personalities who have taken grand standing of this nature who have abused uh, and created disinformation now just two or three days back we see an announcement being made by the madras music academy to felicitate one such proponents of these uh, wrong narratives that is shri tm krishna with the highest honor of sangeeta kala nidhi as the cliche goes we are at the best of times and at the worst of times so this will be clear because that is why we have gathered today for this panel discussion and indeed i am honored to be in the midst of giants like shri chitravina ravikiran ji dr ranjani vasuki ji and professor gautam desi raju ji all of choir no formal introduction but for the benefit of our audience i would like to mention that we will discuss this ongoing situation where given the recent felicitation being announced i mean we have we have gathered here to discuss this situation shri chitravina ravikiran ji does not require any formal introduction because he is a household name in karnataka shastriya sangeetam a child prodigy in himself who has dedicated his entire life right from a very young age to the service and cause of karnataka shastriya sangeetam right now musician ravi kiran returns his kalaniti award he says principles are much larger than all of us i'll remain grateful to the organization so this is now snowballing into a massive controversy this after tm krishna was awarded the sangeeta kalaniti award by the music academy he has worked very hard for uniting people through music and doing amazing projects like bringing out rare compositions of putukada venkata subayyar by reaching out to the current family descendants vidushi ranjani vasuki ji is a carnatic classical vocalist daughter cum disciple of dr nagavalli nagaraj ji she is a gold medalist in ma music and phd working in the aesthetic elements of indian classical music from the bangalore university she is joined uh, we have the honor of her presence in this panel and finally we have none other than professor gautam r desi raju ji an internationally acclaimed supramolecular chemist and besides that he is a well he is well trained in karnataka shastriya sangeetam by stalwarts who trace their lineage to justice p l venkatramayya and mudikonda venkatramayya giants of that sort what is so unique in today's panel is that we have two panelists who have a thing in common besides the passion of our music the chitravina ravikiran ji received the coveted honor of sangeeta kalanidhi 
bestowed on him by the Madras Music Academy in the year 2017. And just a few hours back, he has publicly stated his decision to return this title along with this, the paraphernalia to the Academy. And Professor Desi Rajoji denied to accept the most coveted Shanti Swaroop Ratnagar Award that was coming his way in the year 1993, citing the inherent rampant bias that existed in giving this award. So in that sense, we have a common two giant personalities having sharing the common theme. Before we proceed, I request our listeners to subscribe to Atharva Forum channel if you have not done so. You are a child prodigy and I'm sure you would have been bestowed with several awards of them. The Sangeeta Kalanidhi is indeed a coveted one. So how difficult was it for you to come to this uh, major decision to return this award and why did you take such a drastic measure? Namaskarams and greetings to my esteemed co-panelists and to you, Ramanadanji, and to all your viewers. You are very correct that uh, you know along the path of one's career, one can accumulate a few awards here and there due to public's support, goodwill, and all God's grace, Guru's blessings, and everything. My teens, my Guruji Chitravina Narasimhan, sir, always groomed me to say that all these awards, accolades, um, money, other uh, fame, name, everything is incidental and only excellence is the thing that we have to really set our eyes upon. And that's how we were brought up and that's how my mindset has been from childhood. So I've been extremely grateful to all the organizations which took a personal interest in my talent and also recognized it in various ways. So there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, I've always believed in my uh, deeper consciousness that people are remembered for what they give, not for what they get. And for me, the thrill of giving back has always been a predominant one from my teens. And in my 20s, I founded uh, my uh, trust called Ravikiran Foundation of India. And soon after that, we started something called the Musicians Benevolent Fund. So like this, there have been so many other initiatives. Even recently, we have we had, uh, started something called the Musicians COVID Relief Fund when there was a pandemic. And we raised substantial sums and helped hundreds of artists across the country, not only Carnatic musicians, but folk artists, Hindustani artists, so many other artists, even film artists. So my whole trust has been to try and contribute as best as I can. That said, Music Academy first honored me when I was two years old. They gave me a scholarship, probably even more unique than the Kalaniji, which a lot of other artists have got. But this one really is something that I cherish uh, because it came in the formative years of my career. But when I got the Kalanidhi, I was absolutely happy, uh, you know, grateful to the forces, God's grace and everything. But now when it comes to returning it, I personally believe that certain principles are greater than all the awards or all the human beings put together. And this is what governed my decision uh, to speak, to say. In this case, there are certain principles which are deeply involved, uh, social, artistic, cultural, and so forth. And that's what led to this uh, decision. So, uh, although you can elaborate on this, uh, on the different aspects, social, cultural, these things, maybe in the uh, subsequent rounds. But let me now move on to the second panelist, Dr. Ranjani Vasukiji. You have a PhD on studying the aesthetics of our music. Now, for the benefit of our listeners, can you please throw some light on what is Karnataka Shastriya Sangeetam and your comments on the way some personalities like Pritiyam Krishna has built the recent narrative around it? Namaste to everyone. Uh, so glad to be in this panel discussion where uh, Sangeeta Kalanidhi himself, who has uh, been an inspiration to me from long. Chitravina Ravikiranji is here and professor of IISE 
and the Atharva Foundation in itself. We should always recognize the medium in which we have come forward. Always pay our respects to the ancestral propagation that has happened till now because of which we have evolved to this extent. So the very name Karnataka or classical, it means it has got a venerable past. It is not something that has grown like just about a century ago. It has, it has its age-old tradition, age-old uh, time-tested practice and generational uh, uh, evolvement of music which has come by. And everything about any classical art, whether it is music or dance or any, any performing art, it is vintage in nature. It holds on to the heritage of our of the land. It is about the venerable past, the ancestral knowledge that we have received. So, if a person who who is not ready to accept the magnanimity of the of our past, of our culture, of our great value system, and you are giving him the highest award in the musical fraternity. And the man more vicious is that he uses the sacred, this sacred medium uh, to do a propaganda. Unnecessary uh, inclusion of so many issues, not based on the art in itself. So I, I heard uh, somebody, you know, writing back that only based for, you know, only based on music and musical values, this award is no. Music is just a small part of Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma is the bigger, bigger value system in which we are all just small art organizers or art believers. So if you don't have your uh, belief system, if you don't have uh, any values in the system itself, and, uh, and how do you call it classical? How do you call it classical? Classical itself means vintage. It means hereditary. It's, it's a heritage. So uh, that way, uh, I feel it's very sad that uh, uh, with so many renowned musicians, with so many people who have really worked so well, uh, aren't we able to choose somebody who can really put up a good example a magnanimous example to the future generations. What will the future generations think? This kind of propaganda will definitely influence the younger generations. Instead of instead of getting into the uh, sadhana, the divine sadhana of the art in itself, you are getting into the political aspects of it and claiming that uh, you are the custodian of uh, the wisdom, or uh, the, you are the custodian of the whole wisdom, and the rest of the society doesn't know anything about it. So this kind of uh, narrative we have seen in several ways, time and again this has happened, and it is unfortunate that uh, such a person uh, like P. M. Krishna has been, uh, you know, uh, chosen for this award, and I'm so happy people now are. Uh, are, are coming up, countering not only artists like uh, Ravi Kiranji, Nasikas, art, art field, artists and audience. Everybody should shun this and nip it off at the bud because this is going to set a bad tradition and tradition will, will flow again into, into wrong direction. I mean, you have summed up your thing in a nutshell. We will be taking up some more things in a, in a layered way. Okay. Now let me move on to Professor Desi Raj. Um, like we share a common interest of science, and um, in that case, what I the way I see it is how the Europe perceived music, distancing itself from the church and the Baroque, and then the Renaissance, and then you then that's how the classical sense builds up, which is not similar to what the Carnatic music being called as classical would really make sense. Now be that as it may. So you're, you, sir, both are a musician as well as a connoisseur. And through your recent book, 
titled Bharat 2.0, your, your love for the culture and ethos of this land is adequately expressed. Now, how in this midst you see the rants of this kind of a narrative and rants of personalities like TM Krishna and coupled with the recent felicitation by the Music Academy? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramanathan. I'd like to thank Atharva Forum for having invited me. And uh, I'd like to say hello to my fellow panelists who are both immensely talented. Now, I'd like to take this in a larger context. There's no doubt that our music, Shastriya Sangeetam, whether it is the Carnatic or Hindustani type, is rooted in Sanatana Dharma. You have referred to the five faces of <clears throat> Shiva in Tyagaraja's immortal Kriti, Satyodhyaka, Mahamadeva, Gora, Tatpurusha, and Ishana. Now, these five faces actually lead to our five nodes. And uh, we cannot think of, forget the ragas, even the nodes, we cannot think outside the religious context. You cannot divorce Carnatic music or Hindustani music from the cultural angle for the simple reason that if you were to ask an austere Muslim, their religion forbids musical instruments itself as a religious structure. So there is no question of separating the cultural context of the music from the music itself. And you cannot derive ragas as we know it in India, in Bharat, without looking at the context. I mean, you cannot get a Bhairavi or a Todi or a Vrindavana Saranga in any other culture in the world. Let's take a, a more pertinent example. If you take the ragas, the notes in the raga, Carnatic raga Mohana, the Hindustani Bhupala, similar notes occur in the pentatonic scales in China and Japan. But if you hear some of those music, it does not sound like Mohana or Bhupala. Doesn't sound like it at all. And so it means that there is definitely a cultural context and a Sanatini context. Now, my fellow panelists are practicing musicians. So I'd like to take up another topic, Ramnathan. And as you know, you said you're a scientist, I'm a scientist. Scientists love to ask questions. Most of the time, we don't know the answers to these questions, but we like to ask questions. First, I want to know, maybe I will ask Ravi Kiranji, why did the Music Academy decide this year's Sangeeta Kalanidhi so soon? When does this announcement normally come? I have been a member of this academy for about 35 years. I have been listening to concerts in the academy for 50 years. I do not remember a situation when the Sangeeta Kalanidhi has been announced so early. I don't know when you were told about your Sangeeta Kalanidhi. Mr. Ravi Kiran, but uh, I don't, this February, March and all is way too soon for them to do something like this. Now, Ramnathan knows about my science and I ask very uncomfortable questions. This election is coming up soon. The election in Tamil Nadu especially is going to be very polarized. We don't know what exactly is going to happen, but Looking at the kind of interest that Modi ji and the BJP, every and Namalai, they are all playing in this. We also know that the gentleman in question was given a Magsese award. Now, this, to my mind, this is like a detective story. It's not, it's not so much about music now anymore. Now, many people who got this Magsese award, including one person in this country who gave a chance to this gentleman to sing in Delhi some years back. They have a very peculiar kind of agenda, which involves really hitting at the core of this country, that is Sanatana Dharma. If you hit, if you, that's why one politician has said, let us break Sanatana Dharma itself. They know that by breaking Sanatana Dharma, they break this country. Which is why the US is so scared of us. I will mention the name of George Soros. 
which I think uh, Mr. Ravi Kiran said, let's not talk about the people involved, but Soros I will mention by name. Now, this is a gentleman who is actively associated with breaking India forces. The other thing is the gentleman in question who got the award was poking fun at this very same academy five, six years ago. In fact, insulting the very same president of this academy who is now speaking very well of him. Also, the citation of the award, it says something about people using music as a tool for social reform. Now, can I ask you, was this kind of a thing ever important to give a musical award? When ML Vasanta Kovari was given Sangeeta Galanidhi, was she given it for any purpose other than her music? I would like to ask, is this going to be the new norm for people to start giving awards? I will also say one more thing. Mr. Stalin came and inaugurated this festival last year. Why are these politicians coming into a music place? I could understand if, say, Sri Ravi Kiran was asked to inaugurate. What are these politicians doing here? And you see, most of you, if you look at social media, if you look at things happening all over the country, the word Brahmin is used as a word for Hindu. They find that Brahmins being somewhat docile and mild, especially the ones in the south, make very easy picking. The name of Periyar has come up. Today, that lady Kanimuri has tweeted something about Periyar. Now, why are all these political things happening? I do believe that the American deep state. See, finally, let, let's be frank. The Music Academy is a very small place in this scheme of things. Okay, it's a very small elitist crowd who listens. A few people know the difference between Bhairavi and Manji, but that's it. It's not a is not a going to be a very large thing, but there is a very large issue here. And that is they feel that by removing what they call Brahminism, they will actually hit at Sanatana Dharma itself because this community rightly or wrongly has preserved from the five faces of Shiva till today. We have preserved this glorious tradition that, you know, I have described, for example, sorry for this bit of self-promotion in this book, Bharat. And all of us will recognize the picture behind that Bharat. You know, when you go and see the sculptures in the big temple in Tanjore, almost it's a microcosm of this country itself. That should be the symbol of our country, not Taj Mahal. So, you see, this is, I think we must look at this as part of a bigger event. This particular gentleman is a maybe a useful idiot for this big gang. And the Music Academy may be even, even more of a helpless place, being forced to give him this award also. I have that as a, you know, Ramanathan said, I declined this Bhatnagar award. 20 years later, I was asked to be the chairman of the jury for this award. So, the wheel keeps turning and sometimes immense pressure is put on the members to start deciding on some awardee, this, that and all. No award in this country, let me tell you. I know enough about scientific awards. What is going on in the Academy now? seems to be just like that. If Mr. Lalgudi Jairaman never got, if Mr. M.D. Ramnathan did not get, if Veena Dhanamal did not get, your teacher, if I may say so, her family, Brinda, is your teacher. Now, if these people did not get, then that means there was always politics in this kind of show. So we are seeing another example of this politics, but this time it is more dangerous because at stake is the whole country itself as we know it. But yeah, I mean, as you rightly said, um, these are difficult questions and uh, I'm, I'll be happy to also join you in those questions. And I request uh, Ravi Kiranji to you know, address them if possible. I really don't know the working processes of Academy, but I got my call around July 15th of that year. Okay. In fact, I remember this because I was just I just landed in Bangalore airport. And so I picked up the call and I had a concert on that same day. So that's how I remember the date almost. But that is the usual time of the announcement. But since you are a member, you should probably direct this question to the organization because I'm an outsider. So I don't uh, know what uh, their rationale would be. And second thing, it is not right for me to comment on a fellow artist. Uh, and at the same time, I am never one to say, do not give the award to somebody. That's not my place. 
it's a private organization and a private individual and what they decide is their prerogative but at the same time i in my lecture i stated that it sends the wrong signals to the world especially to the youth and aspiring artists like uh, professor mentioned uh, because they will all start thinking that these are the yardstick to get this kind of awards so they will actually waste years of their lives chasing shadows that is the biggest point i made in my lecture i think uh, because uh, drawing young minds away from excellence in their formative years is a huge social issue and that needs a separate dialogue that needs a separate discourse in all the major channels everywhere and uh, so these are the kind of uh, things that we need to study at length and we should also examine what are the responsibilities of an artist from a social perspective uniting people is the main thing you know bringing harmony raising funds for good causes inspiring people creating things that will actually be of value and um, you know collaborations with uh, diverse artists from different parts of the world uh, these are the kind of things that an artist has to do and maybe do research in music and health and music and uh, other social causes which are more important so instead of doing all this um, if a person were to spend uh, about 85% of the time on talk and only 15% on action and most of the talk is also utopian because you know for example asking a dalit to sing is an easy statement to make which doesn't take even uh, half a second but it takes 10 15 years to identify talents from so many different perspectives and then give them different levels of training you have to choose about 100 people then you have to see even irrespective of caste this is the kind of process only one out of 100 really get into some kind of a level right this is among the talented ones and i have done all this from 1990 i have actually worked in this rural music education i have campaigned for this in a big time because i strongly have believe that music is definitely not caste centric i have seen talents in the rural uh, segments phenomenal i made i actually proved that rural children could even sing uh, sahana and edukula kambodi i composed geetam and uh, tirupohar i set to music in sahana and edukula kambodi when i did a project for sarva shiksha abhiyan in 2006 that still remains india's largest camp for rural uh, children uh, 31000 children attended that that uh, camp across uh, the state of tamil nadu and there i deliberately composed some geetam because it was tamil nadu i composed everything in tamil my geetams in uh, pantwarali kindolam then i set to music certain tirupurs that i just mentioned in ragas like sahana edukula kambodi khamats all these ragas and these children sang very well at least in a group setting so this kind of talent is there even now i had a honor of being invited by the honorable prime minister ji for a personal meeting where i brought up this uh, things to him and i told him we need to start a scheme called rural empowerment through music and arts we need a strong action point not just talk so the talk is exceedingly misleading and it is uh, it sounds very reasonable it sounds very fashionable but it doesn't uh, you know hold water after the first 30 seconds of analysis so this kind of loose talk is what uh, the, both the mainstream and social media is now seeming uh, prey you know, to fall prey to so i think they need to get out of that mindset and we should have serious discussions of what it takes and second thing hard questions need to be asked what has that individual done towards this directions personally what is his or her track record when they make this kind of grandiose statements how much have they worked in that area to even know the challenges of this since i worked in this area i can actually tell you the amount of challenges that are there in this kind of things i have trained students in from diverse communities some of them are extremely successful performers even today performers but it is not about talk it's about years of hard work it's about years of grooming their them mentally physically musically so it, everything requires time and my biggest objection to the award is not against the individual it's only ideological as i said i'm i'm an issue centric person not a personality centric person in this kind of macro things and so my objections but purely that you know a lot of divisive statements were being made a lot of insightful statements were being made and a lot of uh, anti india propaganda was happening outside the country this is a very serious issue that was happening uh, which 
any indian whether he is a classical musician or not that person has a stake in our country in our culture irrespective of uh, their religious or uh, you know uh, caste uh, roots so we all are stakeholders in this kind of problems so it's a, it's a larger problem that needs to be addressed and uh, there probably needs to be something called artistic freedom versus artistic accountability balance so we cannot have everything under the guise of artistic freedom you know go around in society because that's going to be extremely extremely dangerous uh, especially if a person is popular i keep talking about uh, you know we all keep hearing about something called power abuse but in my books something that is far greater and more dangerous is popularity abuse because power abuse can the the sphere of influence of power abuse is generally limited compared to the sphere of influence of popularity abuse which can actually affect millions and that needs to be a very serious subject that needs to be brought into the mainstream discourses so these are my sense yeah as you rightly said it it takes years of years years of uh, together to recognize talent and to hone them that's what i think dr ranjani was also talking about sadhana the aspect of sadhana that is associated with it so let me have a very blunted question before i make some remark particularly to dr uh, ranjani vasuki that say suppose some student is approaching you for studying music do you go about asking their caste do you go about asking their background or what is the typical uh, kind of uh, uh, interaction that you initially have before you commence your class nobody nobody asks the caste it's all about the interest and the focus that you can show for the sake of art so it's not even not even it is not at all a matter of uh, it it is i don't know so people are bringing all such things brahmanical stuff and things like that how many uh, great musicians of hindustani system are muslims and we really revere them so so much amir khan's music or our yesudas uh, uh, how many people all the exterior doyans we we don't when we don't consider the caste Why do you have to cherry pick the caste amongst the people who have been sincerely practicing and propagating music? Now, all Brahmins are not musicians. In the same way, not everybody, not 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 the others are also lay. Like, it it it's the it's the same the other way round also. So when you are doing Brahmin bashing, and uh, with that, basically using caste, using political things. using uh, the name of gods using the name uh, the, the the sacred places of gods using the sacred uh, festivals and observations of our culture through music and do your own nar- narrative uh, and you know profess your radical ideology this is what is happening basically uh, you made a very wonderful point which i that's why i jumped in, in on this so if we were to extend this statement that carnatic music has kept certain communities out that statement can be disproved in 30 seconds you can make the same argument can you make the same arguments for say exagana or villupattu or bhangra dance can you start building conspiracy theory for all these things saying that only one particular kind of region or one community is participating so they all made a conspiracy to keep everybody else out so these kind of statements themselves sound very intelligent but they are they cannot stand scrutiny even for 30 seconds that's how hollow and shallow they are and how dangerous they are because they send the wrong uh, perceptions yeah, they, to people who do not want to understand mindset they just show the corrupt mindset of the person yes and try to bring <laughs> disharmony in things if i miss this it is just a divisive agenda just divide people divisive. The, the, the phrase uh, "tukde tukde gang" is has been used by Honorable Prime Minister in the House. It is anti-Hindu so, anti anti and anti-national. 
and people do say people well recognize that india has two and a half enemies today so this half enemy is far more dangerous than the two external enemies today this is my frank feeling and this is being fully taken advantage of by the american deep state by the communist party of china the evangelicals this whole unholy gang and they have found that this small community which is innocently going about in enjoying some small thing somewhere in a corner of a state which is severely anti brahminical they have found that this is like an acupuncture point where they can hit so we can see all the elements of a political attack here once again i would emphasize this goes far beyond a musical mat yeah definitely this is far beyond the musical matter no doubt about that and talking of this inclusivity and exclusivity and all just very simple litmus test i mean we know that ananda bhairavi has not been handled by tyagaraja and uh, the the way it has come down to us is that he had respected the words of some other artist who belonged to a different caste apparently in the village where tagaraja had gone and he said that if you start composing and we will lose our livelihood as to honor that tagaraja said okay fine i will not compose in this raga at all no did did tagaraja any time ask okay are you brahmin for me to uh, take this kind of give this kind of a help or something i mean this we see right from the, a, the music actually recognizes only talent no matter where the talent came from Now, if we dig slightly more deeper in the past, uh, the, in the about the Tamil, the Tamil Nadu aspect at least, we have something called this Panar community, and who currently we see the some of them in the Sri Lankan and some uh, suburbs of Tamil Nadu. This Panar community, two hundred years back, were the custodians of music, and what had happened due to the British judicial intervention in the uh, second half of the nineteenth century. because of which you had this devadasi thing getting brandished because of which the art was getting died and then you had the something called the social purity movement coming in the 90s from the uk where the tawaif in the north india gets completely brandished and the devadasi system are all equated and devadasis are equated to prostitutes and then you have this mutur shri reddy coming up and showing this anti nach act all these things that is when again brahmins actually come forward to take up this dying art otherwise it was never actually if you look at 300 400 years back there were theoreticians from this community who studied the music and wrote treat treatises but the practitioners it was it was far and wide in the society so people without knowing the history of this of this uh, divine art i mean they come up to create as professor rightly said it is like a tukde tukde gang who would like to create splinters one after the other and it is not something new 50 yes sir i am just tempted to i just remembered that the pitamaha of carnatic music purandar das sir was not a brahmin at all so i mean what are they talking about in the end what are they talking about it's incredible that this narrative has been allowed to go on for so long partly because i think the genuine rasikas and musicians have been very quiet uh, sri ravi kiran ji mentioned a very nice word chasing shadows i will tell you a small incident again pertaining to this patnagar prize which i was personally involved in there was an upper age limit of 45 i have seen people becoming mental cases by the time they are 40 trying to think that they are going to get this prize and it is very similar to the sangeeta kalanidhi in the sense that it is like a small valve those who get that batnagar prize get everything after that those who don't get that get nothing after that and one of the great things that the modi administration has done last year is that it has scrapped this award it has been this nonsense of this batnagar prize has been going on for 60 years in this country finally they had the guts to scrap it and this i think this single act will probably improve indian science more than anything else when you use that word chasing shadows 
I have seen is people, their family lives get ruined after they are 40 because they keep dreaming that they're going to get this award. And then the people in the committees who decide these awards, I'm sure it is like that in the academy, will have inordinate power in deciding the fates of, you know, really innocent people. And they feel somehow getting this award is going to be so important. And in a way it was. So I would say that there is a certain evil system of the way in which these awards have been given. Maybe we should even scrap some awards for a few years. And what Modiji has done is he has democratized a number of these scientific awards now because a large number of them were scrapped. I think some kind of a housekeeping and cleaning is required also in the musical community. It should be, I would, I would say. But uh, I mean, one can only hope for the better, you know. That is right. Uh, and and in one of the previous uh, answers, Chitravina Ravikaranji rightly mentioned that this is a private organization awarding a private individual. But it, 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 it claims to be the music academy and uh, uh, everything like gets, gets legitimized once it comes to Chennai in terms of Carnatic music. But the way they have ignored the artists Stellar artists from Karnataka or Kerala and Andhra Pradesh, to name a few. I know Professor Desirajan named the teachers and other yesteryear doings who were not awarded. But even in our own lifetime, if we see some of the stalwarts from Andhra Pradesh or Karnataka or Kerala who are practicing musicians and the way they have been ignored, that also raises a different question. But it, be that as it may, it's a private body altogether. And the wordings under which the award was given, for that matter, I believe Chitravina ji should have been given a second Sangeeta Galani ji. Because the kind of social uh, harmonizing work that he has been doing uh, without any, uh, what they call, halabula, deserves a second award in that case. So which, which goes that there is something really gone astray. And as Professor, you are rightly mentioning, there is some evil force that is clearly having an agenda to run havoc, and say, especially before this election thing that is uh, that is incidental, that some kind of a polarization is what is expected. Now, as we are closing to, towards the end of this uh, panel discussion, I would like each one of you to you know, spend a few minutes to, uh, okay, we have this problem now, we have understood what the problem is. And we see that, okay, their arguments cannot sustain even 30 seconds of a commonsensical response why is it that this narrative has has occupied a large space and we are really uh, placing it in such high extent that it is going to create havoc and it is going to have the stupid eye uh, breaking India force, even, even for arguments which cannot sustain a 30 second of logic. Why is it that it is given that much promise? That is one aspect. The other aspect is what is the way forward? Okay, we are sitting four of us together. We, are, we have spent an hour or so on this. That is one. The private organization, what it does is it's completely different. But we as passionate Rasikas who are kind of emotionally attached to the system, what is the way forward that you three people who are practitioners of music and who are complete stakeholders to say to, you know, people for Rasikas like me? Why is it that this narrative has taken shape and what is the way forward? We'll start with Ravi Kiranji. Well, I thought uh, ma'am had some point that she wanted to make, right? <laughs> no, no, I just wanted yep. to bring upon the point Professor uh, Sir said that, you know, singling out music from the spirituality. That That's, that's again another uh, kind of a very well thought of propaganda. Yeah. How can you attain Lokottara Ananda or the blissful state without reaching the supreme? Whatever the, the, the supreme eternal thing that we we claim that it is high. So that's about the spiritual excellency that happens during rasa. So this is not quoted by, this is quoted by greatest uh, aestheticians who say that reaching the spiritual destination is the ultimate purpose of art. So if this is the purpose, how can you single out the sahitya, or on which God it is made, or how it is made, or you, in that case, you should be singing only Alapana and Swarkalpana, that is pure music without any theme. Do, do that, just that. 
Why do you have to take God names? When Tyagaraja, Swami Tyagaraja himself has composed compositions in such a way that there is Nadopasana kind of Rakti Raga compositions. There are also Madhyama Varga. See, a society is based to have people of various kinds of expertise. Uttama Varga, Madhyama Varga. So there are, the society is supposed to be like this. Not everybody will be of the same kind of genre. So Tyagaraja himself, he has composed Divya Namas and Utsava Sampradaya Kritis, which are almost like bhajans, which are, you know, uh, which have the same tone, tune, repeating, recurring tune, so that the Astika Samaja can, can still be able to be part of this musical journey. So in that case, so how can you single out the spiritual part of music and say that uh, you are you, you use that as a, again a tool? Yes, sir. <clears throat> With regards to your questions, uh, yes, if sir. I could make just two, although I am in the presence of two renowned musicians, uh, two musical points, and then I'll answer your question. First, if you look at the word asura. Asura is somebody without sur. You know, he so that the person who that is how that word came, sur and asur. So you think right, it's there right in the beginning. And as somebody who you know, I, uh, I'm sorry, I will give an analogy which only people who have listened to Carnatic music will be able to understand, maybe not the others. But if I were to listen to Ramachandran Samraksha Poham. In addition to listening to that song, I automatically think of Brova Vamma. And after some time, there is no difference in my mind between Lord Ramchandra and Bangaru Kamakshi. And in the end, there is no difference between any of these things and let us say the final passages of St. Matthew's Passion by J.S. Bach. So all music is actually going to a much higher place. And this is something that lies at the root of music itself. Coming to your question, Ramnathan, I am a bit surprised at the intensity of the reaction within a few days. I Frankly, I never thought it will be so much. I thought our community or the community of music lovers in Carnatic music are too passive, too docile and will not do anything about it, having seen this kind of passive, docile behavior in the scientific community for 45 years in India. So I, somehow this has frankly surprised me. And I do feel that with the political changes taking place in our country, people have now got the confidence to speak up. And once you like the walls of Jericho coming down, once a certain number of people start speaking, then you will find that these people are just merely small bullies. And it will not take long for this whole Sanatana thing. Really, our country, India, is becoming Bharat. And I think it is all our sacred duty to see that this what was India now becomes Bharat. And this whole issue of these things, you will have a lot of gadbad. This is a manthan. I talked about asuras. There are asuras and devas. So uh, there will be mohini also. So a lot of things will come out in this present period. And out of this will definitely come the Amritam because that is there in us. This is part of our faith. And I am sure, I am very confident that this time I really thought it wouldn't be so much. And you say reversible or irreversible, you are talking like a chemist. I think it is still in the reversible stage. It is not yet gone irreversible. And with the kind of election result we are all hoping for this year, I think it will go much closer in the direction that we want. Rightly put, sir. And uh, uh, yes, as Dr. Ranjani also mentioned, that one cannot separate spirituality and this, uh, the core of it. Uh, but actually, the, the kind of arguments that our opponents, so called our opponents, take is that if you look at Chaturdandi Prakashika or, a, or any literature written during that period, so you will have the, the bhakti, the bhakti kind of a thing will come much later. That's what the, the claim is. But then if you look at Shetragnya or if you look at uh, uh, Purandara Dasa, 
whose kriti whose compositions are much much before that i mean what i'm trying to say is even if in the chronology if they try to come up with academic arguments that for pure cerebral music uh, you need not have any lyrics or lyrics especially of gods uh, that that argument also doesn't test the uh, doesn't stand the test of time because it doesn't hold water inherently in our in music case, in which case they should start singing in those ragas without uh, reference to any of our gods let them sing about some yeah. other things but don't involve, don't sing those krithis of tyagaraja and mutsam dikshtar anymore don't so don't That's sing true. them why See, abraham if they are abraham gone, panditar yeah. abraham panditar in the 18th century or just after the trinity's time it was 19th century sir he has composed more than 600 700 krithis in the chaste carnatic uh, music but addressed to jesus but did it find any mainstream do we have any churches today an- announcing at even in during december mailapur santom church is not very far from music academy but do we have any platform given to musician the christian musicians themselves to hold just a month long uh, kriti uh, again when people like this ian krishna who are trying to create this counter narrative which does not stand the test of time why is it that we are fearing it it will shackle the uh, the, the, the the breaking india force why and what is the way forward now chitra ke chitra vina ravikiran ji your comments on that yeah um uh... the way forward in my opinion uh should be examining just the last few years and i strongly believe that it was a systemic failure to analyze some things for more than 2 minutes in an era of twitter and instagram people barely have the bandwidth to even analyze something any kind of statements become trending in no time right so people do not really analyze things so i think we may we need to go back to the basics we need to start analyzing things play devil's advocate with everything and then take it on objective merit rather than on subjective merit and that is the very important way forward in my opinion and uh, the second way forward that i can see is when anybody talks first ask them hard questions about what their track record is on the subject matter that they are you know mouthing off basically so that hard question has to be asked by society if a ramakrishna paramahamsa talks about something it's different if if it uh, kanchi paramacharya or ramana maharshi talks about something vivekananda talks about it different to a person who is no you know experience who has no experience in those subject matters going and talking about things so whether it is social causes whether it is uh, cultural causes we need to ask people hard questions of first give your pedigree first state what you have done in the last 10 years at least with the subject matter that you are talking about that needs to be a, a duty of society to check the third thing is anything that is said they must actually keep an open mind and listen to counter views in a dispassionate manner so that arguments can actually be civil and actual the 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 amrita mantana that professor talked about i think it will bring a lot of treasures provided we are able to not focus too much only on the poison first right now there are a lot of uh, all uh, you know hala kala visham that is happening in uh, the social media it's so toxic so we need to start maturing even as uh, social media users and we need to start looking at things from a analytical perspective with objectivity in our mind and if you are able to do this and uh, not be blind about one side or the other so today everything is so polarized right from environment right whether it's uh, even about uh, climate science there is so much of politicization it has become the way of the world both in the east and in the west so this is something that we need to address carefully and start looking at merit before arriving at conclusions and when we want to be judges today everybody is a judge you know it is everybody is 
So if they are going to be judged, the first quality that ne they need is judiciousness. Every citizen has to start becoming judicious. So these are the important ways that society can actually start maturing, evolving, and then finding solutions to real problems, not imaginary problems or manufactured problems or choreographed problems. Very brilliantly put um, that we need to look at the real problems and not the manufactured problem because the real problems are there because no society is bereft of any problem. We, we have our own problems. There are ways to address them in a very civilized way as well. Um, as uh, Professor Desiraju rightly said, and little that I know about him, it is really surprising for me to say that, that this kind of positive note came about when he expressed his surprising that within a short span of time, we saw that quick reaction, which was unheard of before. That's indeed a very pleasant thing. The, the, the moment uh, this award was announced, we saw Ranjani Gayatri coming out. But then now there's a counter response to them also by the academy. And I'm sure that something will be down, down the way to Chitravinaji also uh, in the due course to come. Then we had Trishur Brothers coming out. Then we had Vishakha Hari and Dushin Sridhar also coming out. So this kind of an immediate reaction well, let me give you a breaking be, news. Uh, could be like uh, let me give you breaking news. <laughs> Palgat Mania's family is now returning. Oh, is that so? Wow. That is that is a momentous thing, yeah. sir. If this is what it is. Oh, this is I just barely one hour old, I think. I am so this is That's the breaking news breaking of this news. podcast. Let me just add a final point. That's really uh, before Sri Ravi Kiran has to go off for his flight. Uh, so, uh, he talked about social media. This is a sociological issue, and sociologists generally say that when a big paradigm is changing into some other big and very different paradigm, which is what is happening in India today, India is becoming Bharat. So this is a huge change. So whenever there are two, there are two huge things. The intersection of these two will be full of chaos and mantra. We know from uh, uh, structural chemistry that when you have two different crystal structures, the intersection between these two is quite amorphous. So it is exactly the same thing here. A very big social order which was there in this country for the last 70, 75 years after May 2014 has changed. This is irreversible. And in this period, there will definitely be anarchy, violence, lots of irregular things will be happening. I think whether we are Rasigas, whether we are practicing musicians, whether we are anybody in the creative subjects or any Bharatiya, I think we should be fully prepared for this. It has nothing to do with religion, mind you. We have not talked about religion at all in this one hour podcast. So please let us divorce all these things from those divisive issues. It is for all of us to realize that there are going to be problems and not buckle down. This is what I would really like to say. And I would congratulate Sri Ravi Kiranji for having returned this award. I would really congratulate you because you see, I have tweeted today that those people who are able to do things like this know who they are. The ones who don't know who they are are the ones who are wishy-washy, the fence sitters. Who have ruined this country so far. So somebody knows who they are, they will clearly take, there is no question of any uh, deciding what to do. It's not a big decision. I'm sure you came to this decision very, very quickly. So it is not a, it is not a, not a big issue. I know it. I know this feeling very well. So I must say that this is a sign of better times. And thank you. Just and a closing, you said, just closing yeah, remark healthy, as you. Healthy foot forward. And I'm sure yeah, I'm looking, uh, I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to hearing both of you in some sabha other than the one we are talking about this December. <laughs> so let me let me hasten to add that I have got nothing against the sabha or anything because they are all so all said and done. I'm this only, I'm only cannot I'm only detract from the music academy's contributions for over nine decades. That is who not can, going who to happen. Can deny, who can deny all that? Yes. So there is I'm no doubt about that. Me. Yeah. So as they, as somebody yeah, said, uh, you know, uh, no, as somebody said, uh, uh, mediocre people are remembered for their successes and great ones for their failures. <laughs> so, so in this case, 
because Absolutely. academy is a great organization it is probably you know its shortcomings are talked about more which is which is just the norm it just it's sort of the exception which proves the rule perhaps maybe maybe on that what i'm note, saying is that nobody is flawless but but uh, to put things in perspective they have contributed the a lot that is that uh, uh, the administration and the are changing and uh, okay. there is a healthy response against Let's see. Thank you all so much for your wonderful. I'm only prompted to close this discussion with one very, with just one very old adage because what we what we come out is that merit is the ultimate thing. No matter what 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 matters, merit is the ultimate thing. There's a saying that gunai hi uttungata yati no tunge na asane na vai prasada shikharas thopi kako na garuda yate. So on that note, that merit is ultimate thing which triumphs. I thank one and all. Chitravina Ravikiran ji, thank you very much for taking your time out and for all that you have done for music and for the society. Uh, Professor Desi Raju ji, thank you for your brilliant insights and your association with Atharva Forum. And Dr. Ranjani Vasuki ji, thank you very much also for your time and your interactions with us. Namaste. I request the subscribers who have not yet subscribed to Atharva Forum to please do so. Namaste to all. Thank you. Thank you all. Namaskar.